Who has some thoughts on a monster called Charles? Oh, yes, right away. We'll go to you. I really enjoyed that there was a very clear protagonist. And really, in the first few moments, uh, the directing was so succinct and the actors were so compelling that you had a complete picture of, of this environment and, and situation. I, I thought it was an incredibly uh, superior film uh, and, and could have really been expanded on. You know, I mean, they could have, uh, you know, this basic idea could really be expanded into a full-length feature, I think. But the actors were marvelous, and that sense of isolation in that uh, maybe Cornwall-based, uh, you know, caravan park was really wonderful. Biscuits! Very nice visuals all the way through, the, the design aspects of their cramped little trailer that they live in with too many things in it, and uh, um, mother smoking while she exercises. <laughs> and yet, I, I know people who like that. I, I used to work with a guy who, who said, you shouldn't eat white bread, it will kill you, and he, he smoked every day. So, <laughs> um, the monster looked good, and I was wondering how it was done. Was that a man in a suit, or was it, was it some kind of a, a, a trick, a, a photographic trick to make this eight-foot monster stand with the little boy. I don't know how it was done, but the end result was very effective on screen. It was very nice, and I don't think this is kind of like a fantasy, because, you know, a lot of kids have this, this kind of, you know, imagination. When they are kids, specifically when they come in abusive families or something like that. I mean, uh, there's a story about you, everybody, I mean, maybe watched E.T., Steven Spielberg, mm -hmm. and E.T. is actually, as, as according to him, he was actually imagining this kind of a, of a creature when he was a kid. In the times of stress, he was, he was a different kid. And sometimes he was feeling lonely. So he was imagining this E.T. And he was talking to him and he was doing this. So he made this film out of his reality when he was a kid. So I believe that this is a reality movie, Miss like, Because there are a lot of kids who, specifically, as I told you, who come with abusive families or, or tough situations who have this thing. So I believe it's a, it's a very strong, I mean, I could see it also comes out as a feature film with a lot of details and all of the things, but it's a very strong story. Um, so actually, I second what the gentleman is saying. Um, it did remind me of like something ET-ish. Um, actually, specifically, um, there's a film called Pan's Labyrinth that's somewhat in that vein, um, where you kind of get the idea that the child is escaping into its into his or own world because of the harsh realities of what's going on in the real world. So. I got very strong vibes from in that sense, uh, but I, and it was, I think the filmmaker did a, a fairly decent job of sort of um, treading the line between something fantastical in a sense and almost Spielberg-like in wonder, because Spielberg's not really a dark filmmaker. I mean, at least when he does like ET and stuff, that stuff isn't really dark. Um, Pan's Labyrinth is more sort of on the darker edge kind of thing, and um, you know the themes he was dealing with. Constitution and stuff. I mean, that's darker stuff. But I, I found actually, uh, to the filmmaker's credit, um, it kind of all worked. And it was actually kind of, I, I thought, anyways, that he was able to mix them. But there was, it was still like, at, once we got past sort of the dark interactions that were going on between the kid and the mom, and you got to the forest where he was hanging out with the beast, it was almost kind of like we're in Spielberg land again, and you know, everyone was happy. Sort of. I caught E.T. from that, but I actually, uh, for me, it was uh, where the wild things are. And they're very much like going into the, the world of imagination again. So it was a nice little twist on that. Just one thing I thought was kind of interesting was that, that um, mark on his arm, which kept on seeing getting worse, worse. I'm not sure if anyone else picked up or had any ideas what that was about. But I thought it was kind of interesting. Just to add to that, I think he was turning into the monster. From that, he was scratching and it was changing color. And at the end, when he was actually growling and communicating with the monster, he was he was morphing into that. Tight frames, the tight shots, uh, in contrast to the actual uh, panoramic shots, those were excellently uh, taken. The uh, the music was also excellent. Uh, it had a slicing and crystalline quality, uh, which feeds the image. There were a lot of nice details in this film. There's a lot of space tropes with the kid. He's clearly fascinated with space, his telescope, and his ceiling with the poster. There's a lot of nice little subtleties there. 
And also, did anybody else notice in the end that there were multiple growls coming from the woods? It took me, it took me like a little bit to be like, oh, there's more of them. So yeah, he's, he went to, he went to join the monsters.